tunika haui, tunika haui de ia de huru do tukaua. Tosi o serade ia de huru do tukaua ne de kanavida. Tane isi na de kanyadaradi, isi na kanyadaradi de o ne kahioti e tuno e wa taru do tukaua. Tano o sakoni kona e das tane kainarasera goa tano oar ki ni o serage o ne kiko ia gongue. Un teta è a goni cura, con sinea gesox, ne, con unque sati, sati, sati udi, sati nasarai, e sinea ne lo unque. They have the same strength as men. Right. But that see before, eh, when they would say you were born, they would say, was senagarate? It's true when she's giving birth and you and her. But if you were saying like it was a child, I say it was a male child, or just say a male, or a female, say they, you would say what what your rotot got with, what your rotot got with. She came through the trunk of her mother, because mm. that's where she comes through the trunk of her mother. So that story, sometimes of the sky woman story, was it really from the sky she came from? I don't know. We won't debate that right now, but. When you say the Yerudotka, we see that's why the people at a certain age and time when Christianity came in, they said, oh, we're not part of the tree. We're not part of that. We're, they, we're, we're, I mean, we weren't considered humans until 1951, and all of a sudden we, we changed our whole goddamn language just to please the church because we came through the tree, the Yerudotka, the and female it, tree. In the wording that you said about that uh, she has the same power as men, can you say that phrase again, that word? You would not same power as men because you're already given a man. You say satohudi satsno serayo. Jutko says, Jutko always says satohudi satsno serayo. They always have the same strength. Signore Gora. The same strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, in there, is there, see if you can find anything in this if they have the same strength then that means that the woman has more strength she does yeah. because if they got the same strength knowing that the male comes from her and it's the same strength but she's got the original strength so for just is there something in that wording of saying the same strength identify like the source of that strength? Well, no, okay, I'm, I'm on fast forward. No. Backtracking, let me rewind. See, I am his male, see, by, by habit, male. So it's say, well, you're going to go that. What I'm going to do they sucked out the power of of her of her thoughts. Unoragosu is two ways. It's brains and then your brains are your thoughts, eh? Because when you say what gunu means I greet your thoughts. Onuara itself is just brains. But when I meet another person and say what gunu means I'm greeting your thoughts. So I'm hoping that you have a good mind. So then it identifies a source of power inside because if you're identifying, like you said, the brain, that's the physical matter. But the thoughts are what's inside that, that's like the power or the energy within it. So then it identifies a source. When you're saying the two and they're of equal, it still identifies a source. It's got a, it identifies that. So anywhere in there is that of a, of a female origin. Well, look what gives what what, what gives the, not all maples give sap. Eh? Which one gives sap? The, the female sugar tree. maples. The but the female tree. Oh, oh, okay. It's the female. So right away it it it, it tells you that the male is really nothing but a part of a female. You know, all the males will just probably put me in their crosshairs now. But it's okay, you know. Somebody got to say it. 
And so it's, it's the power and maybe they're, they're just like her protectors, eh? Because mm -hmm. that's our, our duty is protecting the women. So you have X amount of female trees, but a lot of males around them. Even it was, so nature started the process of us being here today. But some of us, the Warudotkawa, people of the five nations, came through the trunk of a tree. And maybe the Anishinaabe came another way. But you'd have to know their story if they have one or still remember it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people really, really don't care about their history, their, their legacy. They're more worried about it. But your legacy has no roots unless you have a past. In the last couple of days, uh, we've all had some powerful dreams. And the woman who, well, who wrote that thing, uh, the image that's on the screen, that uh, Elizabeth, what's her last name? I don't know how to Nibzi. pronounce it. Nevesy. Anyways, her also, she had a, uh, a, not her, her son had a powerful dream. And uh, we were talking about it earlier, about the dreams. And it made me remember dreams that I had last night. I know that I had uh, like some it was like in a whirlwind of dreams, but I couldn't remember anything. But when we were talking about uh, the dreams a while ago, I remembered the dream that I had last night was my face was covered in tears. I was, I could feel tears all over my face, but I wasn't sad. And so if it's not tears of, of uh, pain or sad, then what kind of tears are it? It's tears of happiness. What's going to make me happy? Very little in this world makes me happy. You know, the, the only thing that's going to make me happy is uh, the, the work that we're doing to have, uh, to get to the stage of fruition. And then to hear of the dream uh, that this woman's son related. Now, apparently she hasn't uh, related much information about the connections to us to her son and anyways her son had a dream that was right on the money about uh everything that's happening so it's just then when i see this picture that she sends us of what she done to me this is what i was feeling last night i don't know if she did this last night if she did it today but in my dreams last night in tears of uh, running down my face it's only tears of joy or happiness this is the thing that it was this is on the other side of the world the Ganawida is now sticking his face through the trees as this is where the Ganawida said to the people that he, when he had accomplished the work here that he is now going uh, cover himself in the bark of the trees and if you ever want uh, if you ever need me again go to the woods and call my name so somebody has gone to the woods and called his name on that side of the world, not necessarily knowing the name, but to call out for that power. And somebody on that side of the world has done it. And it's the proper one again. It is uh, a woman representing the truth again on that side. Well, there was, it's interesting you bring this up there. Eh? Because I mean, I meet so many people, and I'm listening stories. I'm a, I, I, I just pack what I need. The rest I throw it out. And this person told me that one of the chiefs of the council, because there's so many um, non-natives like in Germany learning, uh, it's gonna show in now. Yeah. She said, <coughs> I said, I'll, one of the chiefs said, I'm gonna go right to. A, this place where they're having and I'll tear down these long houses and say they have no right to to practice over and I thought like well she's got some nerve she doesn't know it herself these people know it so there's a fear already eh? yeah what if these people learn what if they accept it I mean obviously they are maybe some just monetarily and but some really in the spiritual so you you expect that in every race of people, eh? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I said, you know, I'd like to see her go there. I said, though, maybe they'll have somebody <coughs> slap her face, the face she des the slap she deserved over here, you know. <laughs> well, this is the stupidity of our people. They say, who are, 
uh, don't share nothing with the yeah. with the white man, with the sure. non-native. Uh, at this stage, when we, if we're going with uh, literally speaking, don't share nothing with the white man. Eh, yeah, you can go with that because the white man's already proven a certain thing. Mm -hmm. But now, when we are looking with uh, uh, extending the two-row wampum to the proper uh, representation, the life givers, the women, then. You can't say you cannot share this with the white people. You could say it with the white man. But when we're looking at now, uh, when people are saying this, oh, you can't share this, you can't share that. But here and on every reserve, it's all being lost. And they're saying you can't share it. But the source of the destruction in the world is what the white man is doing. And so they're saying, don't give the medicine to the one who is sick. Because the sickness that he carries is in the mind. And if we don't heal his mind, then we here will continue to be destroyed. So we got to go to the source, to his mind, on that side of the great waters. And this is the thing that our people don't understand, is they don't understand that we're still in a war, basically. So we're in a 500-year uh, war here. And the fact is, is that the two-row wampum was not an end to it. The two row wampum was quite simply this a timeout. Mm -hmm. A timeout to regroup. Because if we didn't get timeout at that time, you know what would have happened. We would have all been destroyed. Not just the native people, the non native people would have been destroyed also. So it would have been a mutual annihilation, like the equivalent of nuclear war right now at this stage. So uh, we know that nuclear war is, uh, or nuclear standoff. Uh, is a very big possibility right now. And what the people of the Five Nations Confederacy have forgotten, what they don't know, is that we are directly connected to nuclear, uh, to nuclear war or atomic warfare. In 1946, what was done, the, the Confederacy done um, uh, uh, an exact... Uh, uh, counter movement or counter action to what their action of witchcraft was and atomic warfare is witchcraft it is nothing more than witchcraft it is the manipulation of the mind the spirit the body uh, all the way from the inside of the individual mind right to the core of the of a molecular structure it's it's a uh, psychological manipulation to be, to be able to do that. Because we can say, well, uh, atomic power, you got these three particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons, and all we do is rip them apart. Those things are designed to be held together, to hold on to each other, their family. It's like a granddaughter, a, a mother, and a grand, grandmother. They're not to be ripped apart. So they rip apart the granddaughter out of the mother's arms and the, the mother from the grandmother, and they take the baby and they fling the baby at the speed of light and smash the head into the head of the grandmother. Uh, that, in order to do that, how do you get a granddaughter to go against the grandmother? This is psychological manipulation. It is witchcraft. The, uh, uh, the atom bomb that was dropped on uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima was a result of religious witchcraft. And at the time, the Five Nations Confederacy done an action but nobody remembers what that is anymore there are some people right now who on social media who are starting to talk about it but they don't know what the hell they're talking about because they heard us talk about you'd have to know what the confederacy done in 1946 but there's nobody out there who knows any longer what was done in 1946 all we got to do is put the bait out there and let's see the people come forward who's going to say they know what happened in 1946. There's nobody left in the Confederacy who knows what happened. But we are directly linked to the uh, atomic warfare, the witchcraft of that, which is coming up again right now, the threat of nuclear war. And for that to happen in the non-native world, they didn't have that until they came here. It's power that they stole from us. The knowledge of the the infinite and the finite. They stole that from here. 
They had to go throughout all the land to get that for the knowledge from the Incas to the Mayans to the great, to here. Uh, three elements of, uh, uh, like say you got three scientists who hold basic knowledge to be able to create, create uh, uh, something between them. And that was the Inca, the Maya, and, and here, the Ganyang Gahaga. Not that everybody else in between is not important, of course, just like on the hand. Oh, you can't say just these three are important. The ones in between are just as important. And without those ones, these ones would be useless. To support you. Yeah. But the fact is, is that the Ganyangahaga, and in particular right here in Ganawagi, is, is since 46 connected to that witchcraft, not on the level of us participating, but we are the only ones fighting it. And the, the fact is, is that right up until this second, we're the only ones fighting it. Because if not, you would have seen that come about by the people who have been over there since when? Since the early 80s, with all their cigarette money, being over there and uh, uh, passing themselves off as Mohawk Nation and the Hague and that. What have they done? Well, they yes. participated to get a United Nations declaration to strangle our people. They did not get the influence into the minds of the people to, to have the people themselves bring forward and even uh, cry for the great law of peace to, to call up the Gunawida's name. They are doing it without even knowing, carving his face, a place for him to come out. That's like they carved a portal for him to come through on that side. How did this woman know? She did not know that the Gunawida said that he was going to the trees and covering himself in the bark. And that should you ever need me again, you go to the woods and call my name. She did not know that. But the moment that we enact the two row wampum into the proper place. If you got this electrical plug and we're plugging it into a place that's got no power and then all of a sudden we got power, it's, pff, we know what to expect. Well, yesterday, they, well, when I went to Valdor, this elder from there was 85, him and his wife, they're a couple of years apart or a year apart. He did the opening, so I said, well, I don't have to do it. I'm not in their territory. So when everybody had a chance to speak, and my turn came, and I, I said, my name's Wayagero Wagatayuni. Wolf Clan, and I said, I got no one I get run I speak to Waganyokahaga slash Mohawk. And when you say that, they, they had interpreters there because they speak mostly French and Algonquin. Yeah. Their English is not clear. And this old man looks at me and he, his ears perked up, and I kept talking. and. It was with people from Ganahaga, and they get mad. They say, well, you're Mohawk. I said, no, you're Mohawk. I'm a Ganahaga. But I said, I can explain myself, and I'm done. Well, and then uh, I said, okay. I said, well, I have to say, no. I said, I'm going to go back to Ganahaga. I said, if we're Mohawks, there were Brits with haircuts for war, for tea. Nothing that a Ganahaga would ever get involved with, because we had our own tea. We didn't need no British tea. So I says, they convinced us to change our name. So he said, he came over there, he came over. I, if he would have called me, I went to him, but he came over to me and he says, but I was still speaking to the body. And I says, uh, he said, well, why are you in Ganyagahara and you're so different? I says, it's, we are the base of the longhouse, so Nuko. And I says, we're the flint. That's what we are, we're the flint. I says, if you throw away the flint, and you put a mohawk in there, you'll never get a spark. Yeah. And I says, the spark, if that's what happened when they, when they realized they could talk the Ganyakahaka into saying they're mohawk, and, and really accepting and signing it to paper, they say, we got them now, because the Queen of England does not make treaties with, with her... Uh, Subjects. Subjects, like subjects, mm -hmm. yeah, and so Her everything priest. you sign could be torn up in your face, and you could work a thousand years, but you forgot who you were. All they want to really want you to do is forget who you are. And he says, I heard that from my elders at one time. He said, Why are these Mohawks calling themselves Mohawk? 
Because uh, another way, uh, he, he, he came up, uh, he says, another way. Is, that's the uh, Algonquin word for Mohawk. That's why Frank Nataway called himself that. Mm -hmm. Frank Mohawk. Oh, yeah. yeah. But a lot of people, I said, me and Ganawanga people don't listen to me because I'm not inside the box. And even our table from Ganawanga Runa, like they, they didn't know, like I was talking Chinese. And I says, this is the thing, I'm glad I'm here. You're giving me a, a, a platform to talk. And I said, I want to explain to you why I'm a Ganyokohaga and they're Mohawks. I says, I have, I, we still have the fire. I says, within the building of the longhouse, it was already prophesied that at some points in time that our house would, would be in this, uh, would be, would have to be repaired. And I said, this is now. And I said, when you go all the way back, I says, oh, we're going to Kwatu. Kahuan says, what do what, 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 I says, what, 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 the fire is going out. So I says, it's like replacing your windows and building a new house. And so I says, you got to go back to the Kanyakahaga to strike up the, the fire to rebuild the house. So I says, the rest of the, the Senecas, Cayugas, Tascororas, Anadagas, we need those materials to re maintain the house. So I said, that's why it's so important. When we lose our language, the government knows we are done. But I says, hopefully somebody's gonna listen here. I says, in Ganawaga, very few people listen to me because of my, I won't say I'm stubborn, but they hate people who know that. Eh? You know, if you're not, see, the, uh, the, what you call it, uh, Hey, people who know the truth, that's for sure. <laughs> and the uh, majority rules, they like the majority rules. You just fill the house with people who who need you for s not really what you're saying, but what they can make from you. Eh? Mm -hmm. where, be where before power was kind of different, you had to, you had to, uh, it's like respect. You can't give it to yourself, you got to earn it. Mm -hmm. And somebody has to give it to you. And at one point later, the, the uh, um, Mi'kmaq women came over and they wanted me to represent them to speak. So I said, see, there's something working here right now. I said, they did it right. I said, my Mi'kmaq clan mothers asked me to stand up and I'm saying what they want me to say, so don't shoot the messenger. I said, we like to do that. The Mohawks like to do that. And they started laughing and I said, this is, what democracy is at work. So I don't know what their lineage is, but I said, I'll represent you. And then I did my uh, <coughs> my whole thing in French. And we had, I had a French, French teachers there, there were all different language teachers. When we finished, she said, son of a bitch, you didn't make a mistake. I said, yeah, because I was thinking. I was thinking all the time. Uh, I'm gonna have to go and finish uh, okay. tilling the garden, uh, but, uh, there's along the lines of what we're saying there's so many things that are falling into place uh, continuously as you know uh, today though know, uh, within the lines of uh, this image and what, what we're also we're talking about also you combine what the day is today for the Mayans today is what did you say it was the, the, the dead the day of the dead meaning mm -hmm. like the day of, of renewal the time of renewal is there an easy phrase or term or word for that for renewal well if it's the re renewing the day of well, of anything meaning like something that is gonna die is because it's gonna like give life to something else um, like your blood uh, as it, it gets pumped out fresh blood it's got to come back in it's deoxygenated okay, so it would be on does it it's like recycling people eh? So it's along the lines of Ongwe Hume. Yeah. Ongwe does it. So what it is, it's the Ongwe does it. It's the re the regeneration of a person. Ongwe Persons. Ongwe does it. Does it? Yeah, Ongwe does it. Ongwe does it. The renewal of the person. Mm -hmm. This is what's happening to uh, this Elizabeth in uh, in uh, Nottingham, she is going through uh, a renewal. There's a thing that's happening to her 
right now it's happening it's affecting her son also because her son received the uh, dream or message about this so she's going through this this is okay so we uh, I have to go finish tilling the garden okay, cool. so uh, we know what we're gonna do next week uh, we're gonna continue every week now uh, finishing the translation of uh, the great law of peace back from English back into Ganyang, Ganyangeha. And right now, just with this little interaction, you see how we arrive at the words where Wayagirda himself said before that uh, there was words that he had to get that haven't been there for, what, 150 years, huh? that, you, that these words haven't been used. So it's through this process that we're going to find this, the true uh, sentiment, this, yeah, the specific tool that we need for this communication back from here, from within this hemisphere to the hemisphere across the great waters. And people like uh, this Elizabeth and others who are starting to awaken and pop up all over the place, just like this, they are the ones who will receive the messages on that side and represent. And they are the ones that we will hear back the voice from. So a very good line of communication today, reestablish a ungwe daze. Very good line. This, this, I was telling Larry Cole and Edith too, when I went, walked into this place, there was a lot of people. And there was a, 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 I didn't know who she was. And when I walked in a room, a woman caught my eye. We both focused in on each other. And I, Where's that suit? And I said like, I'm not going to pay attention to her, so I looked away, and then my, when I talked, and she, again, I caught her looking at me, and she, this time she smiled, and I just acknowledged her smile, and I, later, after I said a few things, I was there three days, and then she came up to me the other day, and she says, I'm from Montreal, I'm Phil LaSalle, I'm a professor at the University of Montreal, she says, I'm really interested in what you're saying. So I said, well, yeah, so we can meet uh, if you like. I said, uh, here's my phone number, call me, because I never ask a woman for her number. So she took my number, and then uh, I said, okay, that's the end of this, the heck with it. So we get on the plane, I, I sit on a, in my seat, and she's sitting next to me, she gets on. And she says, huh. this is my seat, <laughs> so she sits with me. And we started to talk. And we, she says, what are you doing? I says, well, tomorrow. I, she says, oh, you're, you're in a hurry to get home. I says, well, yeah, I'm getting in a hurry to get home because I have my son. And I said, I, I feel weak when he's not around. And she says, okay. I say, he's a little boy. Okay, she says, you had mentioned that. She says, I got a book that was written in Seneca. And we, I wonder if you can translate it. I said, I'm working on the great law, but I said, that's, it, yeah, both can be done at the same time. But I says, I'm, uh, I'm meeting tomorrow with the group. And then I says, no, it's up to you, you call me. So we, we're talking on the way back on the flight. It's a short flight, I don't know. She got back, we went to get our bags. And she came stand next to me. I was with Toby Daibo and and this black girl that was with us, too, there was like five or six, a girl from Iran. I love this girl. This girl is amazing, this Iranian girl. Strong. She can't talk, you know? And she has a beautiful story. But anyways, it, this woman came to, and she says, okay, I'm gonna call you this week. I says, look, I, I'm not, never home. She said, when's the best time? I said, six o'clock in the evening, I'm just, I'm eating, or I'm finished eating. And five in the morning, take your pick. <laughs> she says, okay. And I said, I'm there. She says, okay, we'll definitely have, we'll definitely eat. Uh, you know, we'll go out and eat, we'll talk. I says, yeah, let's sell. She says, over, I'll go over the bridge. But so she kissed me, but she didn't kiss me. She gave me a kiss and the girls went, ooh, you know, and me, I said, uh -huh. well, that's the peck I have. <laughs> 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 and they started to laugh, so I said, she will hate me after the second Okay, show. how do you say that in Ganyangeha? <laughs> That's the effect that. <laughs>
and she says, why don't you go with, why don't you ask her for her number? And I said, I don't chase anybody. I don't chase nobody. I said, if she calls me, she calls me. But I don't, she'll call me. But she says, you wouldn't know. I says, well, no matter, I said, again, like the longhouse is built on a base, he's going to get half, so is the language, all the languages. So I said, if I can pick out all the Ganyakeha words, I'll know the story, then I can fill in the blank. You know, when you think of it, if a, if a book is written in Seneca, you know, the, as they are the well with the Ganyakeha, it's because our two minds are the same, but opposite. Opposite sides of the coin, but the same um, the actions, power, the nothing. same everything. North and South Pole. So if there's something written in Seneca, <coughs> I would bet you it's got to be about the Great Law of Peace. What else is it going to be about? Unless they wrote... Uh, religion. Yeah, the religified religion. version. Uh, That's what I said. I said through the words, multiple sentences, I'll know right away it was written by a Christian. It was, it was a Jesuit mm -hmm. dotting the I's. I'm crossing the T's. She said, you know that? I said, yeah. No. Okay, I really have to go finish tilling. Now we'll go. And, okay. uh, well, we'll pro probably see you uh, before Saturday. But, okay, I'm uh, going to stay a while. Yeah, um, You're going for a Wednesday? You're going to be here tomorrow? We're doing the planting tomorrow. Oh, okay. Then I'll come right. by tomorrow, yeah. Okay, I'm going to finish tilling. All right. Don't change the Yo.